Got a nice Lambo coming up behind us. Let's see if the Benza can keep up with it. Look at that, that instant response. Only halfway down on the pedal gets me up to speed to keep up with the Lamborghini. The Venza is a wolf in sheep's clothing. We're in my favorite Toyota crossover. This is the Toyota Venza. It's so good that it might be able to knock off the Lexus NX and RX. Today we'll find out. All Venzas since 2021, that's when they reintroduced it back into the market in the United States, have become hybrid. They all feature all wheel drive standard. They all feature the exact same two and a half liter hybrid system that we see across the Toyota lineup. 219 horsepower and around 40 miles per gallon. But after today's driving, I can tell you, you can easily get above 40 miles per gallon in this guy. Now the exterior styling has not changed a whole lot on the Venza since 2021. In fact, the only major difference or addition you could say to the styling has been the nightshade edition, which I believe came out for the 2023 model year, which will live on for the 2024 model year as well. The Venza to me with its more flowy and softer lines represents a true successor to the third generation Lexus RX. The Venza, which is based off the Harrier in Japan, has a history sharing with the old Lexus RX, the first and second generation Lexus RX. And the Venza still kind of gives me that Lexus RX vibe. And that's why I'm gonna be comparing it a lot to the Lexus lineup today as well. No other Toyota or Lexus has this sort of front end. It's very unique. The daytime running lights, which double as the turn indicators, you got that very interesting vertical detailed portion around the Toyota logo that is kind of like a Harrier signature that dates back uh, to other Toyota Harrier generations. This is the Venza, of course, but other than the naming, it's exactly the same. In this limited trim, we have those beautiful 19 inch wheels. The base model will come with 18 inch wheels. And from the back, we have a coupe like crossover design that doesn't look like it's hunched down in the back nearly like you see with a lot of German competitors out there. We have a small accessory hitch down there, dual exhaust. Turn indicators are located right here with the reverse light right there. Very sleek and futuristic light bar that goes across that's bisected by that blue Toyota hybrid logo. I wouldn't be surprised in the, in the future model years we'll have uh, the Beyond Zero HEV logo right here. And actually in Japan, they offer this with that beautiful RAV4 Prime plug-in hybrid powertrain with 300 plus horsepower and about 40 miles of EV range. Now you'll see the JBL subwoofer back here. We have nine speakers, 12 channels, 1200 watts of power. Sounds pretty good overall. Venza map, but if you look this up, what I like, look at the quality. Even the pull tab to this tray has a nice stitching to it. Full spares tire, or at least full diameter spare tire down there, uh, which is going to be an awesome addition. So many cars nowadays, especially if you look in the Lexus lineup, they all have run flat tires uh, and no spare tire. Tonneau cover, there are no power plugs in here. I'd love to have a 1500 watt power inverter in here, which I know is available on the plug-in hybrid version of this over in Japan, but it is what it is. We do have a power folding lift gate. We're gonna get in the back seat. Kids have been loving it back here, has been taking them to school. What's the leg room like in the back of the Venza for someone who's over six feet tall? Well, I still have tons of leg room here. A small rise in the floor, uh, and I also have vents and USBs, uh, sorry, two USB C's down there. And if we look up, this is the Stargazer roof. I think Lexus calls it the Dynamic Sky. They're the exact same technology with the press of this button. We can see above and it is pretty cool. I love having that feature down here in Florida because uh, it is uh, a great way to bring in light, but not necessarily too much light and heat with just the press of a button. You do have this additional sunshade here, which will retract across the roof if you don't want that additional light or heat coming into the cabin. Soft back to these beautiful leather seats. We kind of have this bronzish stitching uh, that adorns them. It's very high quality, very Lexus-like. Uh, soft touch armrest here. If I fold this down, a couple cup holders, and look, there's even that, that nice stitching on this little pull tab too, like we saw around the spare tire. I love the materials going on on the door panels here, and we'll see it flow into the dash here in a little bit. Kind of this light gray, and it's soft touch. It feels like leather, 
and it's overlapped with this brown. I typically don't like brown, but these contrast and complement each other very, very well. You also have that bronze stitching here on the door panel, and then kind of like this faux wood finish, which is amazing compared to anything that's piano black, glossy black plastic, it looks great. We also have matte pockets on each side. Headroom, six feet one, no problem here. Feel very comfortable. And let's go ahead and get in the front seat. Just like the back seat, we have a very nice door panel here. Extra stitching on the front uh, with this gray stitching, a little garnish here for kind of like a high aluminum trim. I think it's plastic, but it looks nice on how it feeds into this stylized bar here above the door handle. Memory seats on this limited grade. This high reflective piece kind of reminds me of the design we see in the daytime running lights as well. We have auto folding mirrors right here. We have 360 camera and you have heated steering wheel in this limited model. The heated steering wheel is limited to just this area right here. The top portion is not heated, unfortunately. Moving to the seat, which is heated and ventilated, we have this bubble or you could say piping that's going on on the shoulders, which looks really, really nice. Uh, lumbar control and vertical lumbar control here on the driver's seat. I wish we had thigh extension here, but can't have everything. Head up display in here, but it's the older generation. And most of the time I don't even look at it. I'm too busy enjoying the new updated 12 inch screen down here, uh, which I believe is new for the last couple model years of the Toyota Venza. It is customizable and it does take some time to get used to compared to their simpler older screens. But once you get used to it and the customizing it, I love having my power meter here or what's going on with the hybrid synergy drive. And then I have the efficiency over the right hand, hand side. Look at this, 47 miles per gallon here in the Toyota Venza, taking my kids to school, mostly in town driving. Beautiful 12 inch screen up here. Unfortunately, lots of glossy black reflective uh, bezel going on. And I don't have a volume knob. Everything for volume here is push button. And at least these are physical buttons. It's not touch capacitive like this uh, panel down here, which I'm gonna turn the AC on right real, real quick. The buttons are responsive. It's just, I don't like how reflective it is and I would rather have physical buttons than touch panel or rotary knobs, which you can get in the base model as well as a, a rotary dial volume knob. So I might be going for the LE, stay to the end for the buying guide to see if I would be picking this limited or an LE model. Steering wheel feels very familiar here. It looks just like the one coming out of the Toyota Sienna that I reviewed not that long ago. It hasn't been moved to like the newer style steering wheel that I saw in the uh, Toyota Crown that I reviewed maybe about a month ago at this point. All right, materials, they flow straight into the door and it matches up and lines up perfectly with the materials here on the dash. Soft touch here, but behind that, it is hard touch. That's something you probably wouldn't see in a Lexus, but Honestly, the materials on the dash here are far nicer than the Lexus NX and probably the RX and TX as well. These materials uh, and, and the attention to detail of the stitching is more impressive in my opinion compared to the Lexus crossovers. We also have that brown accent color here that goes all the way up with the stitching, a soft touch all the way around the shifter. Um, these cup holders also are a little small for my big Stanley. It doesn't fit in this small circle, so it's kind of resting on these spring-loaded pieces to keep it from flying around, which it still does. Heated ven ventilated seat control here, very simple, very easy to get to. Uh, this is, I think, a tr coin tray. It says not to put long drinks in here, any drinks at all. Um, but yeah, underneath that, there's a felt-lined bottom portion as well as a 12 volt in there for additional accessory power. So the Benz has got you covered with power outlets because like I mentioned, two USB-Cs in the back. You actually have three USB-Cs uh, back here. My phone's sitting kind of on top of the wireless charger, but I am wirelessly, sorry, I am wiredly plugged in to the Android Auto, but it can do wireless control as well. Power button is in a strange position all the way down here. And it is kind of awkward trying to get to these charging ports or the wireless charging pad down there with this awkward uh, power button, uh, or you can say it turns the car on and off button. This is the control for that Stargazer roof. And it is very uh, impressive. I like playing with it. Uh, and then we also have these LED map lights up here as well. Digital rear view mirror, lovely feature here. Like I said, you also have that 360 camera, put it in reverse, top down. 
It makes for a simple, essentially a completely straight parking experience since you can see how parallel you are to the line. So love the 360 camera, but I think it's time to go ahead and start driving this amazing hybrid crossover from Toyota. You know, I like this shifter as well. I know it kind of gets in the way, like I said, of the cup holders, but Lexus, their new shifters are just like these tiny little Prius-like non substantial shifters and i know that that their future is fully electric lexus before we know it by the end of this decade so by 2030 but i just don't like the shifter in there like i still have an engine give me a real shifter instead of that small little nub of a shifter it is not good enough and i like this leather wrapped very high quality premium shifter here and the Toyota Venza. We're gonna throw it in the turn. You know, I don't get a lot of turns here in Florida. It feels pretty light. Uh, there's a little bit of body roll. I didn't take it that hard. I would say that the RX and NX, especially in their F Sport models, do handle a little bit better uh, than the Venza, but the Venza is not about performance. It's about smoothness and the regal nature to it. Um, it's very, very quiet. Do I hear this huge Hino? barely heard that massive truck go by me toyota's done a ton of insulation with underneath the vehicle i also have acoustic glass up front which is typically a lexus trait i don't believe that i have it on the side uh windows but let's see if i can hear this is convertible pretty much completely silent and yeah that head up display it's not bright enough it doesn't give me turn by turn navigation it does give me uh, when I change radio stations, it does pop up. That's probably what I like the head-up display for the most. But the rest of the time, I'm really enjoying this 12-inch screen down here. Comfort. These seats are pillowy soft. Great support overall. I have plenty of room to flow into the door over the, the armrest. Visibility. Since I'm in a coupe crossover that has a more aggressive uh, you know, roof line to it, I do feel like my head is obnoxiously close to this A pillar and also the roof line. My seat is all the way down. And I had this sort of experience in the Toyota Crown, but the Toyota Crown was even worse because I was hitting my head getting in and out of the Toyota Crown. I haven't done that once here in the Venza. So to me, I just feel at the top height uh requirements or restrictions here in the toyota venza with how high i'm sitting oh the steering wheel is getting hot though so I'm, i need to turn that off and the great thing about it is that it remembers your heated seat and heated steering wheel setting from when you turn the car off previously so i really enjoy that uh having that climate concierge to an extent um, the auto brake hold does not however remember if you had it on or off the last time you had the car on Got a coupe like crossover over there, which I think is absolutely hideous in that AMG uh, GLE coupe crossover. It is not an elegant design. It kind of looks like a bulldog, uh, which some people like the bulldog look. That is a beautiful Lexus IS in Grecian water. Guys, we are getting treated to a lot of very nice cars we're seeing on the road. Uh, there's an MX-5. You know, this is the first like, cool day here uh, in the fall here in south florida so all the snowbirds are i feel like they're coming out of the woodwork right now car carriers everywhere streets are getting packed people walking everywhere uh and yeah lots of very nice cars on the road as a result you know one thing i think lexus does a little bit better is you know there is a little bit of vibration that comes through the steering wheel um through the road imperfections so I guess Lexus has that standout quality compared to the Venza. Just cruising around 40 miles an hour, I never really know when the engine's on or off because it is so quiet, you rarely hear the engine even when it is on. Um, I have to look at the little EV indicator icon here at the bottom left corner of the, my MID to tell if the engine's off or on when I'm just cruising. When you're accelerating, yes, if you get hard into the pedal, it'll be a bit droney, which will get it to a zero to 60 here in a little bit. But in everyday driving, the powertrain is supremely smooth and very, very quiet with very little distractions or anything that kind of disrupts from the from the powertrain. It's not there. Like you get that buzziness in the NX and RX when you push them hard too with those 
uh, the same sort of powertrain in there. So I put it into sport mode here. A lot of front wheel drive thrust, but no slippage. There's 60 as we come on to this 4Runner. 0 to 60 in 7.42. You know, I was thinking seven and a half to eight seconds. So there you have it, 0 to 60 in 7.42. Uh, you could get an idea of the engine buzz, but that's the first time I've ever floored it uh, since having it for a week um, because I feel like it's plenty smooth and powerful enough to just keep you up with everyday traffic. This road right here is notoriously loud. And even with these 19 inch wheels, I'm, I'm, I could absolutely live with it. Um, so Toyota, don't know why you brought the Venza to the United States. I know variety is good, but the problem with the Venza that it, it's that it's so good on the luxury end, it kind of, in a lot of ways, eats into the Lexus NX and RX. And with its styling, I think I like it, well, there's no doubt I like it better than the, the new RX, the fifth gen RX. And to me, it feels like a more sculpted third gen RX uh, that was discontinued, what, in 2015 or so, and then 2016 uh, came out a new generation, we just came to the fifth generation. So yeah, to me, this is like the true successor to the luxury RX that we had uh, from about 99 to 2015. Since then, the RX has, has taken on this sporty persona that the Venza wants nothing to, to deal with. It's like, I know I'm not a sporty car. I know the nightshade that has some cool looks to it, but Venza doesn't try to pretend that it's luxury and sport. Venza's 100% wants to pamper you, wants a very nice, soft, quiet experience with a smooth powertrain that gets you 40 plus miles per gallon. After flooring it and then doing a zero to 60, it still says I'm getting about 46 miles per gallon. Uh, so let's go ahead and head into the office. We'll do a quick buying guide with the 2024 pricing as well. I'll just say it right now. Prices have gone up about 1300 bucks from 2023 to 2024. Looking at the builder of the 2024 Venza, like I said, $1,300 more per trim level compared to 2023. So if you see some leftover 2023s, there's no difference between 2023 and 2024 to my knowledge. So snap up a 2023 if you can before the 2024s jack up that price, 1300 bucks. Which model is best for you? So you have four different trim levels, LE, XLE, Nightshade, and the Limited that you saw in the review today. All of them have the same headlights and taillights, the LED projector beams. Um, the fog lights are not on the base grade. The Stargaze roof is available on the Nightshade and the, lim the Limited. Uh, it is not standard on either. It's an additional, I think it's 1400 bucks option. Um, the Venza LE has 18 inch wheels while the rest of them have 19 inch wheels. You have roof rails on the Venza Nightshade. The LE also does not have roof rails. So if you plan on taking road trips and putting a ton of luggage on it, maybe the LE is not the best choice for you. All of them have hands-free power lift gate. The LE has a black spoiler where the rest of them have key colored high gloss black accented rear spoilers with full LED center light at the top. The LE also has a center light LED light as well. If you need to have rain sensing wipers, the only way you can get them is a limited. Moving on to the interior, they all have a wireless charger. The Venza Limited gets the 12 inch LCD MID. And that's a brand new screen that I really, really like behind the steering wheel. The XLE and Limited and LE have the basic seven inch screen uh, behind the steering wheel. The Limited, like I said, also comes with a head up display, but it's not a very good one. It's pretty antiquated. All of them have USB ports. Digital rear view mirror comes standard on the Limited, auto dimming on the rest of them. The leather trimmed steering wheel guys is power even on the LE model. And it looks like it's the same on the XLE and Nightshade, but the only difference that I can see is that those models come with a chrome accent, which I would rather have silver accent because chrome is going to blind me here in Southern Florida. The Limited, as you saw, had the heating steering wheel. And here's a reason I would not be going for the XLE or the Venza Nightshade. It's because the seats are not only not ventilated, they're not perforated. You're going to be sticking and sweating against these seats. I've had this experience in like the Sienna XSE model that didn't have ventilated or perforated seats. So I have to get cloth 
or perforated ventilated seats. That's the only way I'd be going. So that rules out the XLE for me in sticky hot Florida. You get those ventilated seats and perforation and the limited, and then you get that breathable cloth that on the base LE model, the fabric trimmed seats. Six speaker audio is on the first three grades. The LE comes with that base eight inch touchscreen, but it does give you rotary dials for climate control. You don't have the ridiculous touch panel. You don't have as much glossy black plastic. You also get a physical volume knob on the LE. The JBL system is available on the middle grades and it is standard on the limited. And what is also standard is that really nice 12 inch screen. But like I said, you have to give up the volume knob to get that 12 inch screen and make other compromises as well with that climate control touch panel on the XLE. So Venza LE and Venza Limited to me would be the models to get. Let's look at my area. What do I have left over for 2023? Cause the 2024s haven't hit the lots yet where I live. So we have an LE uh, 13 in my area within 150 miles. We also have 19 limited models. So let's look at the most uh, or the least expensive limited in my area, 44,000. That's about right. 44, 45,000 is where the limited uh, would be. If you're spending up to $47,000, that's too much money. Um, what about the Lexus NX? Well, if you want the same sort of features that the Venza Limited can give you, you need to spend mid $50,000 for the luxury grade. Now it does come with some benefits like the Mark Levinson sound system, which is gonna blow that JBL system out of the water. And it has a better head up display. There's no denying that. But is it worth $10,000 more for? Absolutely not. And I'm not even going to talk about the RX because the RX, if you want the same features, is going to be about a $60,000 vehicle. So that brings me back to the Venza, ladies and gentlemen. Every single one of these is going to be a good buy. Just depends on where you live. The XLE with those vinyl seats that have no breathability is a tough sell for me. But the Fabric LE uh, is a great buy, mid-30s, and the Limited uh, for the mid to low 40s with all the technology and all the luxury you get really makes it a better bargain Lexus with better styling than the Lexus RX and a more functional exterior that stealth wealth you could say compared to the NX. The NX, I really like the design on it. It's just the interior feels compromised with interior quality materials and also feels co compromised with a little bit of uh, interior rear leg space and rear passenger space. The Venza definitely feels roomier, but I'm going to shut down there. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you'd be going for a Venza or a Lexus or which one of these Venza grades would you be going for? Or would you be getting a RAV4 Prime or something like that? Uh, which may cost a similar price to the Venza here. So better powertrain, but not as uh, nice on the inside. But I got to shut it down. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great one.